So far we've looked at recursive functions for doing standard straight math functions as well as functions that had user output. What about when we use recursion with user input? The simplest case of that would be a function put this in a script I'll we'll call it recur input.scala and since I'm going to be doing input I'll import my standard import. The simplest version of this would be a function that for example adds up in numbers where the person who calls it tells us how many numbers they're going to enter. So we'll just call this one sum and we're passing in how many numbers we're going to read. I'm going to go with integers instead of doubles here. Of course this could be made to, to read doubles and sum doubles just as easily. So what should this do? Well, I like to think about these functions first in terms of the base case. And what is the base case here? When should we stop? Well, if I ask you to add up zero numbers, that's a pretty easy problem to do. So if n is less than or equal to zero, or we could just say is less than one, well, then the sum should be zero. There aren't any numbers to add up. Else, well, in the non-base case, what do we need to do? Well, we need to read a value from the user, and then we need to give back that value plus all the others. And once again, that's how we think about it in terms of recursion. This step uh, in addition to all the other steps. Now, I'm going to write this the first time, and I'm going to be a little bit verbose about it. I'm going to say that input is equal to read int. And so we give back input plus the sum of n minus 1 values. And I'll go ahead and run a REPL here, and uh, we'll go ahead and just call this instead. So if I call sum, and let's print line, sum of five numbers. Scala of recur input. The five numbers I'm going to enter in are pretty boring, but they have a nice summation for us. And so we get 15. So that works just fine. It turns out I don't have to introduce an extra variable for this. I can use a more compact form if I want. And indeed, this is how I would probably write this function most of the time. There are pros and cons to both introducing additional variables as well as to not introducing additional variables. The disadvantage of this version, well, so it has the advantage, it's, it's more succinct. Uh, the disadvantage of it is it can be harder to debug. Some people might find it more challenging to read. I would argue that, at least in this case, that's more of a, of a style issue and, and what you're used to. If you find the longer version to be easier to read and to think about, by all means, please write that version. Now, this function right here, in some ways, is kind of mundane. It's doing what we did before. We tell it how many values we want to read, and then it reads that many values. What if we don't know how many values we want to read? What if we want the user to be able to determine that as they go? And so one way of doing that would be to say, well, what if I'm only summing positive values and I want to stop when the user enters a negative? So sum positive. And this function is a little bit different because it doesn't take any arguments. And this is where things, the use of input allows us to really change things up because in this case, whether we are at the base case or not depends upon user input. So here I am going to read an int and store it in a variable. And then I'm going to check if input is greater than or equal to 0. Well, then that means that 
we're supposed to take input and add it to the result of doing a recursive call. Remember, this function didn't take any arguments here. So when we call it, we're not passing an n minus one, we're not passing anything because it's the user input that's going to determine whether we're at the base case or not. Else, well, it's addition. The base case for addition is probably, should be zero. And we can test this function. Now, this is gonna read numbers from me, however many I want, until I enter a negative value. And then I get back the sum of all of them. Okay. So that gave us back, that gave us a little bit more capability than, than what we had previously. Uh, but we're still lacking some things. We'll come back in the next video and we'll look at how we could take this a little bit further to have things like string values so that we are, can be more explicit about when we're going to stop. And then also another challenge that we might face with this, for example, if I wanted to take the average of these values, the fact that here we don't know how many values they, they put in. So we have to figure that out in our function along with taking the sum.